Hi, hello. It's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy, and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Hi, hello. Welcome to a very special vlog. This is the Death Valley vlog. Yes, yes. Broder stands rise. We're get, we're getting our own little vlog for Death Valley. Doing this as a buddy read with Matt from Matt Sharapa. Love you, Matt. And yeah, we're we're gonna have a good time. We have a very special weekend plan ahead of us. I'm going into the city today to meet a friend for dinner, but also we're bringing Broder to Tokyo. Death Valley in Tokyo. Let's let's feel it out. Does that work? I'll let you know. But yes, can't wait to dive into this today and have a blast. Yes. What is this about? Out on the sun-scorched trail, a woman encounters a towering cactus whose size and shape means it could not exist in California. Yet the cactus is there with a gash through its side that beckons like a familiar door. So she enters it. What awaits her inside this mystical succulent sets her on a journey at once desolate and rich, hilarious, and poignant. A bit of magical realism, an ayahuasca trip. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Sounds completely Californian as well. And yeah, super, super stoked to dig into this with Matt. So we'll keep you posted. Also, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. And look at that hot pink. It screams summer. But yes, this is coming out September 26th, 2023 from Scribner. So watch out for it. Okay. Um, I'll keep you posted on my wearaboots and what I'm doing while I'm reading Broder as well. So, uh, catch you on the flip side. Okay, hi. While I'm on an empty train, quick update on Death Valley. I've read a few pages. We'll say, if you're a fan of her podcast, Eating Alone in My Car, there's uh, a bit of nod to that. We've got gas station food already. Um, thoughts of the void that she talks about a lot, about being a void and trying to fill that void. In the very first page, she talks about feeling empty. All emptiness alleviators are temporary. I'm not quite sure if I'm getting along with the voice. Our character's depressed. Her father's in the ICU. At the end of the chapter, she talks about how she's making the coma, her father's coma, all about herself. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, parentheticals that I'm not a big fan of, but uh, I'm gonna check a lot. Um, yeah, going to the city real quick to have dinner with a friend. And uh, yeah, we'll do some reading on the train. We'll update you later. Hello. Hair is is wilding out. It's Friday. Um, last night was great. Had dinner with a friend. I thought I'd order a spicy tomato pasta, but it was um, hummus, which was fine. It was great. And then went to a bar afterwards for a shot of tequila, but it ended up being like this giant glass of three shots. Not complaining either. It was fine. It was, it was great. Had a good time. Made my last train in, back to my city, and got in at like around 1 in the morning. And now we're up. It's 8.40 on a Friday. 
I'm gonna head to work and then right after head to the airport. Yes, so we're we're hustling our hoofies today. We're doing the most. We are exhausted. But some updates on Death Valley, Melissa Broder, Broder Stands. Let me also say, Broder Stands, I've only read the Pisces. And after I read the Pisces, I tried to get milk fed, but there was like a long queue for the book. I finally have it though, um, but I like sent, what do you call it? Like I, I put my hold on hold, is that right? But yeah, I uh, had to do that because uh, we're reading this. So once I finish this, I'll definitely get to milk fed. And I've listened to quite a lot of episodes of Eating Alone in My Car. So, so that's where we're at, Brother Stands. We just got to the giant cactus and she's feeling herself inside the cactus. She's, she's uh, communicating with it. Our narrator is a writer trying to deal with grief and trying to make it less about herself and connect more with just the world itself. So that's why our narrator is in the desert, sort of wandering around and appreciating nature, being one with nature. But yeah, a lot of um, being in the present moment and just allowing our narrator to make things less about herself and just just be, let be. That's That's as far as updates go. I'm still not quite sure how I feel about it. I find that... The humor just isn't hitting right. Like there were lines and moments in the Pisces where I like laughed out loud, but here I'm laughing less. I don't know if it's because it's a more serious subject matter, given that her father is sick and her husband in the book is also sick. And these just feel like very personal. So I wonder if Broder is having an issue balancing personal issues and creating fiction out of her real life and overlaying that with humor. If there's like enough emotional distance where she's able to write through these things, but that's, that's where we're at. Yeah. Okay. I think next time I update you, I'll probably be at the airport. So why did I say that we're airport? I'll probably be at the airport. So stay tuned. Okay. <laughs>
There's like phallic realizations within nature and all, but like not as horny as the Pisces. It's as if like her editors at, at Scribner or whatever were, were like, turn down the horniness. No, like keep it, keep it to a low, keep it to a minimum. So like not enough sex. I don't think, I don't think there's a sex scene in here yet, but we'll let you know. We'll let you know. I also wanted to note pink, pink tabs for my book to match the typeface as well as the interior. Yes. Okay. That's as far as updates go. Next time I see you, I'll be in Japan. So dangerous. This is basically a dollar sake juice box. I'm gonna fucking die. Let's die together. Hi, it's 2 a.m. I just got to Tokyo and I'm literally walking to go to the club to meet my friend. I'm I'm fucking insane. Let let, let the world know. I'm insane. I'm insane. I'm doing it for Broder. I'm doing it for Broder. Okay, where is this place? Oh my god! Hi vlog, it's uh, Saturday, um, 10 a.m. I'm gonna go out, do some shopping. I got a little lunch date too. And then, yeah, meeting another friend, a sp special guest. I'll do a fit breakdown outside. This mirror's like really warped and weird, but it's uh, 74 degrees. Should be good. Let's go. <laughs> This is so much easier when you're when you're alone. Uh, okay, hi people. I'm going out again. Yes, I only got two hours of sleep. Um, we got the Mew Mew Cap, our legacy necklace, this nice thin breezy shirt because it's 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 hot out. Fifty one percent jeans, white basic white tee, and uh, this bag. And hydration nation because you gotta hydrate.
last day in Tokyo, or last few hours. I got sleep. Quick outfit breakdown, blonde tea. You saw this yesterday. Jeans, Yumi hat. Let's go. in Korea. I hope all that vlog content was okay. I realized I was really bad at like filming. You know when you're running on less than like four hours of sleep, you tend to forget a few things. But here were some updates with Death Valley. I think in my last update, I had said that I wasn't jiving with it. Well, Matt and I got to talking, um, if anyone's forgotten, doing a buddy read with Matt Sharapa. He, he turned things around. He showed me a different lens and I decided to go with this new lens that he provided where Broder's voice, though not as funny as I think as like the Pisces, it's charming. And I think it's here, Broder is a lot more earnest with her feelings, given that if you've listened to Eating Alone in My Car and understand who she is as a person. This is Broder at her most honest with reflections of just death in general, but also her husband and just the thought of like losing somebody, either through death or this lovelessness. These sort of explorations of what it just means to be alive and how hard it is is ultimately explored through sort of the trips that occur. We're about 20 or 30 pages shy from the ending, and I'm curious to know how Broder wraps it all up, but there are some, some wacko magical realism moments in here, and we'll not spoil any of them because some of them are just like, they're, they're out there, they're, they're out there. So I, I definitely wonder if Broder, you know, ever took like, a trip to Ojai, Joshua Tree, you know, took some shrooms. Like, I, I, I wanna know. I wanna know the origin of how we got to the giant cactus and how her spiritual embodiment is housed within this, this cactus that she comes across and encounters some very, very, very interesting moments, blending memory, the now, the past, and the imagined all together. In parts where the book is sometimes dissected into consciousness one and consciousness two, which is a very interesting concept that I'll get to later once I finish. But yes, uh, thank you, Matt, turning me around. I, I just needed to look at it from a new frame. And I'm, I'm enjoying it now. I'm enjoying the voice. I'm enjoying the parentheticals even. I'm enjoying the sentence structures, given that they're working now. I do feel like, though, at the beginning, Broder didn't have quite a strong footing in her narrative voice. And, you know, as it happens, when you write a book and you're on with it and you're in the grind of it, your voice just sounds better in the last half than the first half. And then you have to sort of like go back into the first half and, you know, do your revisions and such, but I'm enjoying it, enjoying it a lot. We'll update you, I think by tomorrow, I, I should be finished and Matt and I should have some final thoughts. So yes, Death Valley, Melissa Broder. I'll update y'all later. Hi, hello. Sorry if you can hear the air conditioning. It is literally 
Death Valley weather today. It's like 89 degrees. It's insane. But here to give you the final, final, final thoughts of Melissa Broder's Death Valley. Matt and I finished up our thoughts and I think I told him that there's a lot of sobriety in this book more so than I feel like her other books. I still need to read Milk Fed, but from what I've gathered from Eating Alone in My Car and the Pisces where her main characters or herself really, or just like parts of herself, try to fill voids with different kinds of quote-unquote obsessions. For, for the example, the Pisces with sex. And for here, we just get sobriety and dealing much with the matter of fact of life itself. I describe this as fear and loathing in Las Vegas without all of the hard drugs, but still with the barest of emotions and handling them at their rawest and purest forms. And it's through love and also this realization that is and isness is essentially love itself. Existing in your purest form is love in itself. And the way that Broder gets to that conclusion while also dealing with thoughts of death, um, existence, how we care for others, how we care for ourselves while caring for others. All of these things are explored in, I think, Broder's most earnest and honest work to date. And it's really refreshing that follow a character who, yeah, just deals with their own, again, sobriety in order to make amends with just being. I found this to be really refreshing and I'll be honest, a bit surprising in terms of tone and sentiment from Broder. And I think for Broder stands, uh, you'll, you'll get a lot out of this one. I think you'll enjoy this. It's sweet. And I think the ending was perfect. I, I had doubts at the beginning, but I think the last half is, is quite strong and really, really beautiful and made me step back and think about care. How am I caring about myself? How, how am I caring for others? And if I am giving myself enough care um, and dealing with my own sobriety, you know? Do, do I have to go out every weekend and drink or to dance to de-stress? Can I, can I just deal with the mundanity of a Wednesday, the middle of it all, and just sit with myself and just be? Sorry, didn't mean to make it so personal, but I think I think that's what Broder is trying to make us do, is sort of look at our own sobriety and just sit still with it and find contentment within the very backbone that we were born with and, you know, leaning into the curvature of it and just, am I happy to be Nathan? Is Nathan happy to be here? Is, is what it is. But yes, that concludes the Death Valley vlog. Thanks for being here. This was a joy. Thank you, Matt, for reading this with me and sharing wonderful thoughts. Matt is always so smart and has a way with words. If you ever find him on Instagram, his way with words, written and spoken, is just exquisite, exquisite. This is out September 26th, 2023. Pick it up. Broder stands. Not to be missed. Death Valley. It's a, it's a sexy one. Okay. As always, be well. Do good work. Keep in touch.